I mean, it is what it is, obviously. She's exercising her uh, jurisdiction, uh, that's her role, to uh, make a determination about what she, you know, finds uh, to be a fit and appropriate sentence, and she's imposed it. So, obviously, uh, there are a number of people, you know, and I'm speaking of the uh, very uh, courageous dozen uh, young women who uh, were very brave and came forward and, uh, you know, reported their experiences. Uh, to police and went through this uh, process, which is uh, very uh, difficult. Um, and uh, they were, uh, you know, extremely uh, brave in our view throughout, and they're disappointed, obviously. You heard some of that in the uh, courtroom. They're emotional, of course, some, several of them, right? And uh, disappointed. So, um, you know, the uh, end result here obviously did not, uh, has not satisfied them. We asked for five to nine years with all the aggravating and mitigating circumstances and the reduction for totality. Uh, and uh, she came in at eight years, so uh, I'm, uh, I feel very good about this sentence. Uh, these were five independent uh, sexual assaults. It was not a serial uh, system, a systemic attack on these women, but rather these were five uh, uh, separate and uh, uh, independent uh, sexual assault. So, uh, given the fact that Mr. McKnight has excellent prospects of rehabilitation, she reduced the aggregate sentence to reflect the totality principle and also the principle of restraint, which means the principle of the restraint of restraint means you uh, re are to impose a sentence only as long as necessary and not another year longer. But that was something brought up throughout the prosecution. Yeah. I was relying on these. Well, I'll, right, I'll just say this. I mean, one of them that has been identified uh, decades ago by uh, one of the Supreme Court of Canada justices is that the, you know, there's a myth that has been in existence for a long time and it's uh, uh, nearest to the benefit of men primarily, is that a, you know, true sexual offender is somebody who's, you know, is unkempt and lives in uh, uh, the River Valley or parks and comes out and attacks people who are totally unknown to him. That's a true sexual offender, and you know, sexual violence within a, a intimate partner relationship, or sexual violence within the bar culture. Oh, that's not you know, that's so that that is uh, deeply um, uh, has can have a deeply undermining uh, impact on the criminal justice system. Trying to hold people appropriately accountable. So you know, that's a myth that's been around for a long time. It was going down, 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 down because she was taking into consideration all these things. To, that would benefit him and saying that he can come back into society and she's she's completely sure that he's going to be able to rehabilitate after this if i have been talking to victims of this sexual of this predator like from this predator for the past five years and contacting and i would not doubt that there was hundreds of victims we know the statistics of sexual assault we know that out of a thousand victims what out of four will go to prison?